Okay, well, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, everyone. We decided to do a last minute Christmas themed podcast because we are clearly in the Christmas spirit. Um, Ashley is wearing actual ornaments for earrings. Right. Uh, so anyway, we wanted to have a little bit of fun today. We also thoroughly enjoyed having Ashley on our podcast last week for her big debut. Uh, and we wanted to get her back on as quickly as possible. Today, we're going to play a game. Well, it's kind of like a game. And I'm calling it What's That Name Holiday Edition. We're going to have more editions in the future, apparently. Uh, so how this is going to work is I'm going to give you the name of a real holiday-themed product or company and then based on the name, you guys are going to tell me what you think the product or the company is about. And hopefully you don't know any of these. It's possible a few of these are familiar to you. Um, but I'll also be interested to hear after you guess and after I tell you if you're right or not and what these names are for, just in general, what your thoughts are about the name and the product, um, if you think the name the name works or not and why. Uh, plus, I think this is just a fun way to learn about some products and companies that, that you might want to include in your 2024 holiday shopping. So are y'all ready? I think we're so. We're ready. Okay. So the first name, I'll, I'll give, we're going to start off with an easy one. Easy Treasy. What is it? Maybe like a car scented thing. I don't know. The thing. Okay, Mike, what do you think? Easy Treasy. Christmas tree um, or candy. You know, easy treesy as in treesy, so it could be a Christmas tree, or easy treesy as in treat, right? Something you might want to eat for Christmas. Those are my guesses anyway. It could be um, maybe something that helps you put up your Christmas tree, like when you're done with it, so we're like an easy package kind of thing. I don't know. Okay, that's... okay. Yeah, you're getting close. Yeah, like lights, like lights that you could stick on your tree. So easy treesy, you can just throw these lights up and your tree's done or whatever. That That's a great idea, Ashley. The scented car thing was interesting. Did Treasy take you to Breezy? It did. It okay. Did. All right. All right. So Easy Treasy is an extremely easy modular Christmas tree. It's like four sections. It lays flat and the inside is hollow. So it's a super easy way to order your Christmas tree. You can even get it pre-decorated if you're that lazy and that much of a cringe <laughs> and you don't want to decorate it. It literally lays out in four sections and then you wrap it and you kind of like wrap it and you snap it and then you stick it on top of each other. And it's, it's an easy treesy. It's like a tree. Lego. That sounds great. Yeah. So we would call this a name that kind of is more descriptive, but also fun, I would say, and kind of gets you most of the way there in terms of the type of and style of name. Yeah. Plus it kind of rhymes and it's kind of fun. Okay. Number two, beardaments. 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 Not beardaments, but beardaments. I want to say it's mints for your beard, but that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, you know, like some kind of oh, is it like the ornaments that you hang in your beard? You got it. Ding, I've ding, seen ding, people ding, do that. Are before. you kidding me? No, they have I don't... ornaments you can put in your beard. Yes. Oh wow. Yes. These are beard ornaments and not just beard ornaments that you hang from your beard, but beard lights. They make lights that you can put in your beard. They have beard glitter kits. So you can get real festive. My husband's doing the no shave November, don't shave December, and he's getting a pretty good beard. I could oh. see him potentially getting festive this way. What That's do you guys think about the name? Well, let me ask how this works. So you're at Christmas dinner, right, with your family all around the table, and you've got your beard with all these. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I can imagine this could be a, a real fun yeah. fun experience for everyone else at the table besides the guy that's got ornaments can in you his imagine? beard. <laughs> yep, yep. What if we just stuck? I like it. I think it's a. I think it's a great. I think names that are fun and clever and that lean no. into what it is. So they're somewhat suggestive. Yes. But you don't know exactly what it is until you see it on the package. I think those are are fun. They're memorable. They sort of fit the spirit of yeah. the holiday, or, or you know, in this case, the the Christmas celebrations. That's great. You bring up a good point, Mike, because I'm giving you guys these names cold. You're hearing them audibly. You're not even seeing yes. them. You're not seeing them with any context and any packaging. And when I looked up these names, you know, with the context, with the packaging, these types of names, and you're like, oh, I get it, beard amends, beard plus ornament. And so it's interesting. In my mind, I'm thinking you guys are going to get these quick, 
but then you realize you don't have co- any context whatsoever. Yeah. And so it makes it a little bit more challenging. Yeah. Mints took me to like breath mints, yes. but then beard didn't, didn't make sense. And then I was like, wait, is it ah. beer something yes. else? Or is it and then beer? when you see the spelling of M E N T it's like, oh, okay. It's not the type of mint that you're, yeah. you know? Yeah. Okay. Right. The point you bring up, Meg, is a really good one, right? If you just hear a name, which in many cases is your first exposure, right? Can you spell it? You know, is the spelling obvious, or are you going to get confused and spell it beer instead of beard, and then it takes you to a totally different place? So one of the one of the challenges for sure in coming up with a great name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is kind of tricky. This one's different. It's black paper party. What do you think? Black paper party. Well, it could be decorations for a party. um, Or it could be a vibrant brand dedicated to celebrating diversity and inclusivity through beautifully designed holiday decorations and gift wrapping products. I'm cheating. (laughs) You are such a cheater. I'm using Google's new Gemini, um, which just came out, I guess, recently to see if it can figure this out. And it's got a picture and everything. So (laughs) you are a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. I still don't even understand what that is. Ashley's like, okay, okay. So I'll give you their kind of spiel. Give okay. Black Joy this season with holiday essentials that look like you. So all their products from wrapping paper to ornaments to gift bags focus on illustrations of Black people. So this is specifically Black people. It's oh. owned by three Black women. Fun prints, patterns, because representation matters. So wrapping paper, um, you know, with famous Black people or just Black people in general. Yeah. Uh, not just wrapping paper, though. It's ornaments. It's it's a bunch of different holiday products and gear. Um, and it's called Black Paper Party. Oh, I like that. Which I, what I think is interesting is that they sell more than just wrapping paper, but they have paper in their name. What do you think, Mike? Is that a positive thing, a negative thing? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think consumers will often give you permission to extend the name beyond what it might originally be associated with. So what I like about Black Paper Party is it's easy to say. It's the first name, Megan, that you've mentioned that I know how to spell it, right? I I could actually spell that just hearing it. And it does lean into what's something to do with party decorations of some sort, right? You don't know exactly what. And that gets you there, right? It's like, what do you want the name to do? Well, if you want the name to stop you and then get you to take the next step, like, I want to find out more. So you click through the website you pay a little bit more attention to the email, then as a consumer, you've almost given the seller permission to say, well, yeah, we have paper products, but guess what? We have other party related products. So I think it's a great name if Mm -hmm. your goal for the name is to generate interest and to get the consumer or the prospective customer to take the next step, even though it doesn't necessarily describe exactly what it is. And it might even be viewed by some as too limiting. There are many examples where things started out meaning one thing, and before you know it, consumers associate it with all kinds of other things. Right, and yeah, it's think different it... from an easy treasy or a beard event in that it doesn't just say Christmas. Like, Black Paper Party is something that could be seasonal or really all year long, which is a good mm-hmm. thing. What were you going to say, Ashley? I was going to say, I think it's a sweet spot. of If you just had Black Paper or a Paper Party or Black Party, like, those mm-hmm. three separately wouldn't have ma- made it, like, what it is, but it, putting all three together in the way that they did that, I think, does telegraph more of the what they yeah. do okay good next one hire santa hire hire, hire santa. santa well i mean the obvious association i have is this is a service where you can call up and the santa claus will come to your door for your party or your kid's birthday party if it's around christmas Bye, mike or whatever. So that to me is a pretty easy name to understand, but I'm not, I'm not the smartest person on this call. So that's my association. I I, mean, I immediately went to like higher as in elevated. Like I right. just pictured Santa on a ladder for some reason, not that that would be anything you could really buy, but that's where my mind went right. instead of hiring. Yeah, this is where spelling is important, mm-hmm. but you're right. Like it's just very straightforward. It's descriptive. It's telegraphic. It's a Service you can call up to hire a real Santa, real beard, um, a professional Santa, as they call it, for your holiday party, 
or picture taking, whatever it might be, which I think a name like this is especially good whenever you're just trying to hire for the season. Mm -hmm. You need a name that is going to tell you exactly what you're getting and, that, and that's going to stand out in the holiday season, especially when there's just so much to be distracted by. And I think if you're searching, you're going to say hire Santa. It literally exactly just pop up immediately. Yep. Okay. What about, and I'm curious, you guys may already know this one. Tipsy elves? Tipsy elves. Tipsy what? Elves. Tipsy elves? -E Tipsy elves. Well, <laughs> ha, ha. Um, is this actually something you buy? Or? Mm -hmm. okay. No hiring, no hiring tipsy elves. <laughs> Yeah, it, I mean, I guess company, it's, it's a company name. Okay. I'm so, I mean, so my I guess, heard of this one. So my, my guess is it's a company that sells clothing or apparel that you can dress up in and sort of be fun and crazy and, you know, add a little bit of sparkle and something hip to your Christmas festivity. So are you cheating place, again, Mike? I am. I know it. Santa Claus is not coming to me. Yeah, you are a naughty Listen naughty to me. Boy. Listen to me. Our podcast is about using AI for naming. <laughs> so I'm reverse engineering this, right? I'm You're giving me the name, and then I'm figuring out what it is. Now, unfortunately, I don't think AI is quite as good as if you gave it the description. Would it come back with tipsy elves? I don't know. You know? I may try that during our, our podcast today and see what it comes back with. But yes, I did cheat on that one too. I'm sorry. I won't Ashley, cheat anymore, a, I promise. Ashley, as a teacher, would you give him an A or an F as a student with AI? A for effort, F for follow through. I'll there just you give you that. Nice. But cheating. Yeah. my guess, I wanted to guess, that my mind went to, you know, the little pocket shots that you can get is just yeah. like little um, oh, yeah. decorated yep. pocket shots. They're small. Yep tipsy get took me to alcohol i don't know that's kind of where i went with it but that's good is kind that's of a kind of name. Cute product name for that so yes mike is ai is correct um so ugly christmas sweaters essentially is what tipsy L okay. started out as which i think of this as kind of like an angry orchard name a little bit you know it's got some mm -hmm. attitude to it it's something that catches your attention it's a little bit edgy um, and you're right. It's a way to look zany and fun and ridiculous in the holidays. And Mike, I, I think they also sell men's onesies and footy pajamas. So if you are into that, Mike, you could get yourself a onesie and you can oh have my my children. <laughs> I, I don't know if I want a onesie. Thank you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. What about holy ball or holly ball? I actually don't know if you say holy ball or holly ball. What's your guess? I mean, my, uh, my mind goes to volleyball when you say it, hollyball, but volleyball. It could be a game, right? Hollyball. So some kind of game that is for families around Christmas time that, you know, maybe takes a soccer ball kind of thing using things you already have, or maybe you buy it. That would be my guess is a, a game themed around the holidays. I just think of those reindeer games, you know, where you have, maybe you have a headband with Holly on and you're trying to do something with a ball. I don't know. That's, that's where yeah, that's yeah, yeah. my mind takes me. Yeah. These are large inflatable ornaments. So imagine just those huge, big balls and you inflate them and you, a lot of businesses use them to put them mm -hmm. outside of their business to make it look more festive. Um, which I, I was struggling with this name because I said, holy ball. And so how's it I, spelled? H O L I B A L B A L L. Oh That's yeah. High. So I was thinking it was so, like some Christian or religious like aspect to the holiday. Anyway. Holy ball. Yeah. So I I prompted AI with large inflatable ornament name ideas. And so instead of holly ball, it came back with gigantic globe trotter as in a globe ornament. Cool. Cosmic Colossus, as in a planet ornament. Mary Mega Mallard, as in a duck ornament. Twinkle Titan, as in a star ornament. Or Winter Wonderland Whopper. Amazing. Oh, Whopper. Winter like, Whopper. Um, I think, I think uh, AI needs a little help from, from us or from others that are more creative. I like the Globetrotter a little bit. I thought that was kind of cute. Yeah, I saw yeah, it. We, I mean, we drive... 
we drive around every day after I pick up the kids and it's just dark and we look at all the neighbors lights and we go to different neighborhoods each time and we saw they saw them they put them in the tree so it's like these little it's kind of not a big tree it's a new neighborhood and they put it looks very um mismatched in terms of size yeah but it is it it looks really cool I mean it's a tension grabbing for sure I like that idea I think I want to do that for next year yeah okay ready festive I would say it's all the decorations like for your plates and your napkins so like if you're putting on that big Christmas celebration you've got all the the festive sex accessories on your table you know, maybe it's a tablecloth, the napkins, who knows, right? That's what I would say. Yeah, maybe like a party pack of everything yeah. that you need in terms of decoration. Yeah. Um, something like that. Yeah, you guys are really close. It's a subscription box for people who don't really, they want their house to be decorated, but they don't necessarily how to put things together. And so this is like a box where you can pick your box of decor for the season and they will send it to your house and they'll send it to you. I I guess every season, it depends on your subscription level, but you open up your box and you just kind of set it out wherever you want to. And it all kind of matches and is cohesive. So that is, do you get to keep it or do you have to like send it back? No, you get to keep it. Mm -hmm. You may, it might even be like stitch fix where you kind of pick out your style. I didn't spend a ton of time online. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. I was like, all right, this is neat. I I know a lot of people they're like, I haven't decorated because I don't know how to do it or I don't know how to make everything go together. So that's not a bad idea. Yep. Okay. So this, in this case, um, Jim and I came up with a couple ideas that I think are pretty, pretty darn good. So, the, so the prompt was subscription box for festive party name ideas. So that was just the prompt subscription box for festive party name ideas. And it came up with things like deck the halls hamper, which is sort of fun, right? So it leaned into Christmas with deck the halls and then couple, couple the hamper with it. Um, confetti countdown crate, which isn't Christmas specific. Jingle Enjoy Jamboree, which has those three J's. So on this particular one, I think AI did a little better job than on some of the other things. Yeah, the, yeah, the Winter are... Whopper, but but it's memorable. I, I still remember it from the last, it was with yeah. something Whopper, but I like Winter I, Whopper better. I, I... All right, Mike, what do you think about Lightnetics? I feel like this is a name that you would come up with and that you would like. Lightnetics. Lightnetics. Uh, well, in the Christmas venue, it could be smart Christmas lights, right? Where you could actually have an app on your phone and you could program different designs into the lights. So I can remember driving down the street and someone had their house decked out and it was all synchronized, right? The upstairs windows were sort of like these unusual Christmas figures and they were dancing. And then the downstairs windows would do the same thing. And it was an amazing because all the like lights were sort of Thinked up with one another. So if I had to guess, it would be some kind of a, a smart or intelligent lighting system that you could do some of that, you know, netting, you know, synchronizing and get everything to have some motion and some designs to it that would really catch the eye if you're driving by the house. Okay. I think I, I went to magnetic, like magnetic lights that you could put, I don't even know, maybe on your house or ding, 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 ding. ding. Is that's, that what it is? Uh, that's it. That's what it is. Easy to have magnetic light strands. Interesting. So I thought my I thought my explanation was a lot cooler than just magnetic lights. Ah. Here it was cooler. It it, it takes you there, like lightnetics. It puts you in the space. You are going to go in the right space, and that seems to be the theme with a lot of these holiday themed names. Is the names are suggestive enough to put you in the right space, and then again, once you get that packaging, that context, the names make even more sense. all right. What about the mench on a bench? Minch? The mench on a bench. I just think of it as like a blow up Christmas scene for outside, right? So you see these, all these decorations now that folks have of the, you know, Santa and the reindeer. So this would be a, a bench with some kind of a Grinch like figure or a minch like figure laying down on it, lit up, right? So that you're driving by and you get another different kind of, Christmas scene that you maybe never seen before. So I think of Elf on a Shelf. Okay. So maybe it's a play on Uh that. Yep. Maybe it's like an evil version. I don't know if there's an evil version of the Elf on a Shelf, but like the the opposite (laughs) version, the arch nemesis of the elf, maybe. I don't know. Okay. This is funny. So you're on the right track, Ashley. So it is um, 
an elf on a shelf analog, but for Jewish and interfaith families. Um, I don't know how to say it. it's Mashi the Minch. Mosh the Minch tells the story of Hanukkah and promotes the values okay. of being a Minch. I don't know what a Minch is, but yeah, I didn't either. That's why I probably went to evil, unfortunately. So well, I because it rhymes with Grinch. Okay. This yes, is that's my why. Guess, this is where mm -hmm. it took you to. But so there's Elf on a Shelf. And in addition to Minch on a Bench, there's Shepherd on the Search for Christians. The mm -hmm. Shepherd is searching for baby Jesus. And then I discovered Snoop on a Stoop. If you're familiar with Snoop Dogg, mm -hmm. um, a totally different direction. There's ah. Snoop on, is it like a, on a Stoop. Like a little version of him? That... <clears throat> uh huh. Yeah, you can have your very own Snoop Dogg um, on a stoop in your house. So there's a lot of different naming versions that are pretty hilarious, um, that are analogs of elf on the shelf. Um, you know, we'll do a couple more here. Let's see. You might know this one scent sickles. Okay. I think I have these. I, they're, they're like, well, maybe I don't have these, but they're, they go on your tree and they make your tree smell like pine or whatever. And so you put them on, they're like, I don't know why they call them sickles, maybe because they look like icicles or popsicles, right. but they hang on like an ornament and then they smell and make the tree smell real. I love that name. Yes, yeah. you're exactly right. Yeah. They, they kind of look like icicles. They're not mm -hmm. as pretty, but they're, they're real subtle. They're kind of meant to hide in your tree and they mm -hmm. kind of make green and brown to hide in your tree to help it smell good. So they do smell. I think that's vested. an example of a great name, right? I agree. Because you, you probably don't have a ton of money to spend. You want the consumer to quickly get the idea. The biggest problem with artificial trees is, well, one of the biggest problems that people complain about is it doesn't smell like a real pine tree, right? Mm -hmm. And so this idea that you can hang these things, it looks sort of like icicles, so they decorate your tree, but then they provide that pine scent. I think it's a great product idea, and I think the name almost telegraphs what it is. You don't know exactly what it is, but it's pretty darn good. If you saw a picture of this, you know, I think you definitely get the idea. So kudos to whoever yeah. came up with that name. And they typically sell them next to Christmas trees. So that's mm -hmm. the other thing yeah. is the context in the store, the part of the store that it's at. You're buying your Christmas tree. There's a whole stand of scent sickles, really easy to yeah. understand. Yeah, I'm going to grab one of these with my Christmas tree. So um, I'm going to run through a couple more of these. And then I have a couple of final Christmas questions for you guys. There's Eve drop. Eve drop are permanent Christmas light hangers. So instead of Eve's drop, it's talking about the eaves on your house, mm -hmm. kind of this word play pun going on there. Uh, there's hoppy paws. So if you are a parent that loves to um, kind of do some fun things with your kids in terms of having Santa's footsteps through your house or reindeer oh, that's cool. through your house, they have these oh, yeah these stamps that you can buy and they do it for every season. So there's Easter bunny too. I think maybe tooth fairy to where it's like, you can put these stamped feet in your house and they call them hobby paws. Um, elf yourself. Have you, I think both of you and most mm -hmm. people, if you've been around for a while, have heard of elf yourself. And Mike, I think we even sent you a Christmas card a few years ago where yep. you get to put your face inside yep. a, a digital card where you become an elf and they put music to it and you get to dance and i love that name because of how edgy it is mm -hmm. elf yourself mm -hmm. may take you to the controversial f yourself but that is the thing that draws you in right you're like what is this and then it's a lot of fun um well thanks for playing my game with me that was fun um, good so i have two great. very important holiday questions what is your favorite holiday movie? What movie should we be, should we be watching this holiday season? Well, I really identified with Scrooge and the very old, you know, Christmas Carol. And I thought Scrooge was actually pretty cool. I actually liked all. He's got all this money. And he's counting it out. And then, of course, I, I learned the errors of my ways when I was little. And I thought, oh, Scrooge is not as good a guy as he really should be. But that's got to be my my favorite. And certainly it's one of the classics. That's I funny. actually saw the Christmas Carol play last week um, at Georgetown Palace. And now I'm going to think about you every time I think of Scrooge. <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to be equated to Scrooge. <laughs> I'd rather be equated to you know, someone else is a little bit more kind and charitable for sure. Well, clearly you end, look like Santa. You're Santa right now. So that's good. Yeah. And at the end, Scrooge turned out to be a pretty cool guy. So maybe, maybe that's an okay association. Yeah. 
No, my husband wanted an ATM for his birthday when he was four because he just he gave out money and he didn't understand the concept when of it. When he was so. four? When he yes. was four, he yes. wanted an ATM? Always been an <laughs> entrepreneur from the start. Um, what a great request. Can you imagine getting a request from your kid? Mommy, I want an ATM for Christmas. <laughs> pretty, pretty ingenious. Um, I would say, I mean, I like the old Rudolph, like the clay animation one i don't know yeah, i just think that's classic yeah, it it's one we always watched because we only had you know 12 channels growing up so it was always on um so that's the one i think i don't think my kids have watched it yet but that's the, that's one i would probably just watch just because it's a classic even though there are, are way more graphically accurate ones now yeah we um and claymate claymation is a cool name right when you think about yeah. what it actually was, you know, animating, mm -hmm. taking clay and turning it into animated figures. I mean, that's an example of a name that it's almost a new category name, right? Mm -hmm. It just sort of, there's nothing else out there like it. And you're, you know, claymation, why not? I mean, so great name for whomever came up with that one too. So speaking of claymation, there's kind of a modern twist on it with a new holiday movie that came out this year, Candy Cane Lane with, I think it's with Eddie Murphy. Um, we are trying to watch new holiday movies this year because I love the classics, like you said, Ashley. But I was like, you know, we need to start adding a few more into our repertoire. Uh, so Candy Cane Lane is one I would recommend that has a little bit of modern claymation to it, which is neat. And then we also watched Violent Night. If you oh are, oh my gosh, if, yeah, I don't know if I would recommend that one. Um, but if you're into violent movies, Violent Night is the new one too. Man, okay, my last question. Before we're done, what is the one Christmas song you'd be happy to never hear again? Oh, I know this one. <laughs> Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Yeah, so bad. I just, you have all, we were, oh, I was in an Uber and we were, I was listening and they had all these beautiful songs. The person was playing, you know, the radio. And then all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> Grandma got run over by a reindeer. And then, it, and even the driver was like, I'm sorry, this is, it's so awkward when this one comes on. I'm like, yeah, it is. It's bad. It is so bad. Yeah, not my favorite. Well, one of the songs I like, but I guess my dislike is I can never remember all of it, is the 12 days of Christmas. I mean, by the time I get to the 11th day of Christmas, I've forgotten or I mix up the 8th and the 10th. And right. my wife always has to help me. Why can't you remember? Because you've <laughs> sung this like 10 times now and I just can't. So I like the song, but it does challenge my my feeble memory sometimes. So then you need to watch Candy Cane Lane. It's all about the 12 days of Christmas. It will oh, help well, you perfect. remember. Okay. my well, least I, would much, I would much rather watch Eddie Murphy over Violent Night. Holy <laughs> cow, oh, Megan. I can't believe you. Were your kids watching Violent Night? No, no. Okay. This was kind okay. of a way for me to like try to bond with my husband who's into movies like that. Like action okay. type stuff. Very sacrificial on my part, I would say. Okay, my least favorite one is like I think I don't even know if I know what it's called. Christmas shoes, the Christmas shoes song, where it's like, it's like one of those song or story songs that of like the kid or her all he wants or the mom that's dying and all she wants is a pair of shoes, and the kid is y'all don't know this song? No. Oh. Good. Good for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah, listen to You're going to have to go listen to it. It's like one of those songs that makes all the boomer moms cry. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, don't listen to it. Sad. <laughs> <And Enough. laughs> Mike, any last words from you, Santa Claus, on, I don't know, naming, holiday naming? <laughs> we just want anyone that, that listens or watches this podcast. Um. They have a great holiday, you know, whether that's Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever your spiritual tradition is. We think it's a really important time of year to get away from the stresses of work, you know, to reunite with family and friends and just take a few days off and, and reconnect with why we're all here. So best wishes for a wonderful holiday. Yeah, happy holidays. Bye, guys.